sure enjoyed the good songs, the good testimonies, being real good in these brethren here. They, they stir your mind when they get to talking about these things and this song. So I'm glad I'm yours, Lord. You know, we didn't have anything that we could offer to the Lord when he saved us. But now it makes a difference. It makes a difference now. And uh, he bought me with his own blood. Now, I, I belong to him, but I can run off. You know, you can leave. The Lord, can, he, these, uh, these scriptures in Romans here, I believe it's in Romans, yeah. Whosoever you yield your members to, his servants you are. Yes, that's that's it. That's what I want. I think it's six, yeah. See, here's a charge upon us. He's, verse uh, 6 and 12, he said, Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that you uh, should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead and are members and instruments of righteousness unto God. Now here's a scripture. This, this, this right here is a key scripture that I use on me to prove what I believe. I'll, 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 I'll say just a little bit and you'll know what I believe about it. <laughs> sin shall not have dominion over you. You could say why. For you are not under the law, but under grace. Now, if, if the situation is today, like some is believing, that you can't make it today, then sin does have dominion over us. You know, if you live and you yield your members to sin, you become servants of sin. But if you don't, you're servants of God. See, we're not under the law of sin and death, but we're under the law of life. He came that we could have life. And and if I say, if I say I have to sin because just say, for instance, uh, we're not living in the time of overcomers. Can you say that and believe that? I can't. I can't. You know, I, I believe that God can direct you as an individual. And uh, I can't baptize you. The only thing I can do would baptize you with the whole, it, it was water. That's all a preacher can baptize you with. He can't baptize you with the Holy Ghost, and he can't baptize you with fire. <laughs> he, he may like to set you on fire sometimes, but he can't baptize you with fire. That's the Lord's baptism. And, and then Brother Patton one time, this woman, she come to him and, and counsel with him, and she said, Brother Patton, she said, my husband, and she just going off on her husband, and he used the scriptures on her. He said, well, sister, why don't you try heaping coals of fire on his head? Oh, she brought the patent. That won't, that won't work. I tried hot grease. <laughs> <laughs> he told her. <laughs> she didn't get him baptized, though. <laughs> But I tried hot grease and it didn't work, so she that, that baptized him. But God knows how to, don't he? See, I can't look in anybody's head here and tell you what you're thinking. But the God that we're talking about, the Jesus we're talking about sitting on this front pew a while ago, he knows every thought going through your head right now. He does. He knows the intent of your heart. He knows what your intentions are when you get out of his church, what you're going to do right or not. He, does. he did that in the Old Testament. He told Israel, 
Uh, Moses told him, he said, look, you're going to go over in the land and you're, you're going to forget God. You're going to wax fat and you're going to forget God and all these evils are going to come up on you. Well, it did. And uh, th the Lord has got a place for us to work today. And I thank the Lord for it. And he said, now verse, uh, let me go down a little further here. He said, uh, verse 15, what then? Shall we, uh, shall we sin because we're not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. Know you not to whom you yield yourself servants to obey his servants you are. To whom you obey, whether unto sin unto death or obedience unto righteousness. But God be thanked that you were servants of sin, but now you've obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which delivered, was delivered you. And being made free from sin, you became servants of righteousness. Praise God. And uh, so uh, we make a choice. We make a choice who we serve, who we want to serve. And there's a scripture <laughs> in uh, John back here, in little John back in the back. He, <laughs> this fits me and everyone I'm going to read it to tonight, if I find it. Yeah. All right. John 3. And John 8, verse 8. Now, can you get that up there so everybody can read it? I might not even have to read it if, if y'all all read it to yourself. John 3 and 8. 3 and 8, John. 1 John 3 and 8. Now, isn't that a doozy there? <laughs> That's, pretty <plain. laughs> That's pretty plain, ain't it? He that committed sin is of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested that he may destroy the works of the devil. And you go to Galatians 5 and you'll find the works of the devil. Galatians 5, let's just look at that. If you want to know what the works of the devil is, uh, this is Galatians 5, but tell us the works of the devil. Called, let's just start with, let's start with 15 and just read down through there a while. 5 and 15. If you bite and devour one another, that means backbiting, running each other down, trying to kill each other's influence, trying to tear each other down. Take heed that you be consumed one of another. He was telling me for church, he had him some hens, and some man gave him a rooster. Yeah. Pretty rooster, man. He is all multi colors. Huh? Colored up, long feathered. Long feathered. And he, he brought that rooster home with lots of pride. Beautiful rooster. And he turned that rooster a loose. And there, how many hens you got? Ten. Ten hens. Judgment number. Ten. <laughs> <laughs> he turned that rooster loose. And them hens did not respect that rooster at all. They tore in on that rooster, and they started picking him. And you're talking about a hen-pecked rooster. He said they had all the feathers on his back part just bare, tore out. Yeah. And that's what you call backbiting. <laughs> <laughs> Biting in the barn. <laughs> all right. So people are good at that. And, and this, this, is, this is the nature of an old chicken. I was raised on a farm too. 
You let one get hurt or bleed, and they'll swim around that thing and peck it. They're trying to help it, they'll peck it. Yeah. Try to finish it off. But it says here, what was that? <laughs> I said, you walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. You know walking in the spirit what it is? Walking in the spirit is you fulfilling the law of God in you. Jesus said the words that I speak, their spirit and their life. And if we begin to put those things in their life, uh, we won't do the other. For the flesh, that's our desires, our nature, Lust is against the spirit, the spirit of God. The spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary one to another. You don't know what your problem is. It, you know, just get a check up from the neck up and you, you found it. So that you cannot do the things that you would. And then it goes on and says, give me some more of it. That's it. But if you led of the spirit, you're not under the, if you be led of the spirit, you're not under the law. And then he said, now the works of the flesh are manifest. Now this is the works of the devil. See, this, this is the weakness of the human race that God created. If we ever fail, God is going to be in one of these areas called the works of the flesh. And then he says, now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, uh, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, bearance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, uh, envies, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Anything compared to them 17, anything like of it, uh, that's which I tell you before, I've also told you in time past that they that do these things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So we have, we have to, those are the things that we have to put to death in our life. We have to fight that and resist that. And uh, that's the works of the devil. Right? And then the other is, uh, the, uh, but the fruit of the Spirit is love. Joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, faith, goodness, meekness, temperance. And there's no law against it. I mean, if, if you want to have a, uh, all of anything you can eat, that's what you want eat of that fruit. But the other, see that the other is, is what plagues this world. That's what uh, people get caught up in. And there's one of them in there It says variance. And I think I've said this before. That's the, just, that's the most deceitful one of them. As we know all the others, what, you know, you're not supposed to kill. You're not supposed to go all these things. But that variance, that little old bitty. You know, you be driving along, and you hear a truck in the head of you. <laughs> they, they, they bear it off. They hit that, heat, that thing telling them you're fixing to ditch it. You know, you better get it back up in line. Well, that's what the Holy Ghost does for us. Yes. It, it keeps us, it's a lead us and guide us into all truth. And it's a lead us and guide us in the truth about ourself. You know, I said, and you should know the truth. A lot of people grab that. And you should know the truth and the truth shall set you free or make you free. But you need to read it all. If you continue in my word, that means taking it off that paper and putting it in your heart, then you're my disciples indeed. You discipline yourself through the word of God. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. But we have, we have to take them steps to get free. And, and getting free... It wouldn't make no difference if everybody in this church tonight, God would set you completely free, except me. It wouldn't profit me none. Would it profit you none? Would it? 
If everybody in the church, God just set them free. If the truth is set them free. But the truth is, I have to look at me. I have to judge me by this law, this, this, this gospel. It's, it's, it's a book of judgment. It'll judge you. And it said if you judge yourself, you won't be judged. Isn't that what it says? Well, how do you judge yourself? Go to the law book. You know, you go in a lawyer's office and you sit down, and, and if you don't know the law of that town, he'll get that book out. Now, he said, this is, this is what the city of St. Gerard or Sykes this, this is the law of this town. Now, you have a choice then. You can either break that law or you can obey that law. But if you don't know it, it's hard to keep something you don't know. So God allows us to see ourselves, examine ourselves, and see whether we're still in the faith or not, you know, and we walk in it then. Praise God. So... <clears throat> There's a song that I wrote down. I'm, I'm not a songwriter and I'm not a singer, but I'm going to sing tonight. While, while y'all are talking, I got it for you while y'all are talking. It's an old song. It's called, He'll make a way for his children, for them to pass through the sea. He'll open prison bars and set the captives free. So look up saints and praise his name. He'll make a way for you. He'll make a way, saints for me, for his children, for them to pass through the sea. He'll open prison bars and set the captives free. So look up saints and praise his name. He'll make a way for you. Woo! Hallelujah.